Hello, and welcome back to Movie Recap Factory. Today we will give you a recap of a crime drama movie from 2008 titled The Bank Job. Without further ado, let's get started. Oh, and spoilers ahead. The film begins and it is 1971 and we see a man sneaking into an open window where he takes some nude photographs of Princess Margaret. We then meet Terry Letter, a petty criminal gone good who owns a car garage which is not doing so well. Two debt collectors arrive and begin to damage the cars because Terry owes them money. After they leave, a beautiful woman drives up to the garage. This is Martine Love, a former model and she has a very interesting proposition for Terry. The scene shifts to three weeks earlier where we meet Tim Everett, an MI5 agent. He meets a woman named Gail in the elevator and later on goes on to attend a meeting. There, Miles Urquhart tells him about a guy named Michael X. He shows them pictures of the man who is a criminal and gangster. The British Secret Services are interested in arresting the guy due to his criminal record, but they're unable to move against him because he has incriminating photographs of a royal. They have a reason to believe that the photographs are kept in a safety deposit box in Lloyd Bank, located on Baker Street. Tim is pretty confident in the success of the job saying that he can simply seize the deposit box, but his boss tells him that this will need to be sanctioned at a high level, and he wants the job done without implicating MI5. The scene then shifts to Martine, who arrives at Heathrow Airport from Morocco, but is caught smuggling illegal substances. We then go to Martine and Terry, who meet up at a fancy place. She tells him that the bank at Marylebone Road is going to have weak security for about a week, as their system is getting updated. They can get into the bank and steal the security deposit boxes. She wants him to gather a team, as he has the criminal contacts to pull off the job, and they will be richly rewarded. She does not mention the photographs. Terry, who has been trying to turn over a good leaf, but struggles to make do with his wife and kids, seems hesitant. After he gets up to go, Martine walks over to Tim, who has been waiting for her at the bar. She is confident that Terry will agree. Unbeknownst to her, Terry watches the two of them before he leaves the place. In the next scene, Michael is hosting a party and one of the guests is Gail. We see her getting intimate with one of Michael's associates, Hakim. Meanwhile, Terry attends his friend Eddie's stack party and tells them the plan. We then meet Lou Vogel, a local gangster, who notes down a bribe transaction handled by two corrupt cops. In the next scene, Terry and his gang scope out Lloyd Bank to plan for the robbery. There, they run into Vogel, who recognizes Dave from his pornographic movies. Terry's crew leases a shop called Lassac two lots away from the bank, with the idea of digging an underground tunnel. Terry informs his wife that his working hours will change and that she should take the kids and go live with her aunt. In another scene, Michael visits Vogel and asks him to look after his affairs while he is in Trinidad. At the MI5, Tim informs Urquhart that things are underway and in control. We also find out that Gail is acting as a spy to get close to Michael. After an incident where the neighbors complain about the noise and police arrive to investigate, they install Eddie on the rooftop to be their lookout. He will communicate with them through a walkie-talkie. As things progress, the police keep an eye on the shop. Tim takes over surveillance from the MI5 agents. Martine meets up with Tim at a pub and tells him to keep the police away, but Tim tells her that it'll draw attention. Just then, Terry walks in and Tim leaves. Terry asks Martine about Tim, but she says he was a stranger hitting on her. In the next scene, Gail meets up with Tim and he asks her to find any copies of the photographs and destroy them. Terry's crew digs the tunnel and successfully reaches below the bank. They blow up an entrance and inform Eddie that they are in and are waiting for the dust to settle to go inside. As all this is going on, the radio chatter draws the attention of a local amateur radio operator, who overhears the conversation and realizes a robbery is in progress. He calls the police, who begin to search their 10-mile radius and listen for concrete details to pin the robbery down, headed by Detective Roy Given. Meanwhile, the crew break into the vault and the deposit boxes are looted for their contents. Terry notices Martine's fixation with a particular box and gets suspicious. Terry opens it with her and upon seeing the pictures, realizes Martine's hidden agenda. Among the photos, there are many high-ranking government officials, including a senior MP in compromising positions in a local S&M brothel. The robbers take these with the money and other valuables. Detective Roy tries to flush the robbers out by sending ambulances to various banks, hoping to spook the robbers. They will hear the robbers chatter on the radio about the sirens and figure out the location. The police arrive at Lloyd Bank and the manager opens the bank and goes to check the vault door. 
they find it untouched and no alarms trip, and the police leave, satisfied that all is well. Terry and the others decide to leave and contact Eddie, who accidentally drops the radio from the building. But this is good, as when the ambulance arrives, the crew is not able to mention it over the radio. The crew heads over to their shop with their loot, and we see a blue van leaving the car park. The MI5 intercepts it, but it turns out to be a decoy, as Terry was suspicious about being followed. Instead, they leave in a different van and head over to a safe house to store the loot. Guy and Bambus escape with their share and Terry confronts Martine over the photos, who explains the unfolding predicament. The crew freaks out, rightly so, realizing that this means more trouble for them than they bargained for. Meanwhile, Tim gets an earful from Urquhart about losing control over the situation, but he is sure about being contacted by Martine. Vogel has also been affected by this robbery, as the ledger containing all the transactions was also stolen. He tasks the two corrupt cops to track down Dave, whom he had seen acting suspiciously around the bank. They capture and torture him until he breaks. As a result, they head to Terry's garage and kidnap Eddie. Vogel also calls Michael to tell him about the robbery, angering him and making him suspect Gale. Terry meets up with Tim and asks him to let his crew walk free in exchange for the photographs. Meanwhile, a senior minister in the government, Lord Drisdale, is shown photos of himself in the brothel run by Sonia Byrne, and agrees to help absolve the robbers and secure their safe passage. During this time, Guy and Bambus are murdered, along with Gale and Trinidad, shoots Dave and threatens to shoot Eddie unless Vogel gets his letter back, while Terry is on the phone. Vogel gives them an hour until he has Eddie killed as well. Terry then calls him back and threatens him by saying that he can give the ledgers and photos to the police but instead asks Vogel to meet him at the Paddington station. Terry meets Tim, giving him photos of the crew to be made into passports. Tim tells him that Mountbatten will ensure this goes through and will meet him at Paddington station to exchange the passports for the photographs. Terry tells him that other criminals are also involved in this whole thing, but Tim says that is Terry's problem. Terry checks Vogel's ledger to see if it contains the name of the detective in charge of the case, Roy Given, but doesn't find it there, making them believe that he is clean. They decide to trust him. Kevin visits and hands him one of the pages from the ledger and asks him to come to Paddington Station at 11 a.m. to get the entire thing. Terry heads to the rendezvous while Martine meets up with Tim Everett, her original contact in MI5, on a bridge overlooking the scene. Vogel and his corrupt police arrive with the mechanic, but recognize the MI5 agents and run. The deputy head of MI5 hands over the passports Terry bargained for in return for the photos of the princess. Terry then chases Vogel and in a fight, knocks out Vogel and his thugs, including corrupt Detective Barton. Detective Given arrives to see the robbers arrested. He speaks with the MI5 officers present, who directed the police to let the robbers go. Terry gives the ledger to the police officer before he, Kevin, and Eddie leave the scene. Vogel and the corrupt officers are arrested instead. Tim personally supervises Michael X's arrest in Trinidad and Tobago, and has Gale's remains exhumed for reburial in Britain. The final scenes have Terry and Martine saying goodbye, and Terry and his family enjoying a relaxed and carefree life on a small motor yacht of their own by a sunny beach. The epilogue states that the revelations about the brothel forced many government officials to resign. Scotland Yard began investigating the corrupt officers named in Vogel's ledger. Michael X was hanged in 1975 for Gail Benson's murder and his personal files are kept hidden in the British National Archives until 2054. Vogel was imprisoned for eight years for crimes that were unrelated to the robbery. The murderers of Guy and Bambas have never been found. About 4 million worth of materials and money were stolen from the robbery. At least 100 safety deposit box owners did not claim insurance nor identify the items in the boxes. So that was all from the movie. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below and do subscribe to our channel to view more of our amazing movie recaps and hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications from our side. See you all next time.